Hello guys and welcome back. In this video we're going to start shading and lighting our uh, simulation, that, the melting effect simulation that we've created. And so far I've, uh, this is the sim that I have. I'm gonna put down a file reader. I'm gonna paste the path and this is what we have. I'm gonna turn off this node just in case and now we should have the sim and this is a high res a high resolution or a mid resolution sim so if I middle click this is relatively um, mid to high so cool and it's dissipating towards the end so that's good and then what we need uh, in order to use this for, with Arnold we need to convert this into a VDB and write it back um, into a .vdb file and right now if I middle click you can see it has volumes too and this is the native Houdini volume so we need to put down a convert and we need to convert this to a VDB volume cool so now if I middle click it says VDBs too and then we need to write this back to disk and I'm going to write it to this location so file sorry uh, prop output and I'm gonna, this is the path, I'm gonna simply write this out. And I've already done that, so all we need is this path that ends with a dot .vdb. Cool, so I'm gonna hide this, and I'm gonna save the file, and I'm gonna create a Arnold procedural, uh, sorry, an Arnold volume note. And I'm gonna call this melt effects volume and here we're going to go under the volume tab and simply paste the path to the sequence that we have i'm going to go to frame two that's when the uh, volume will show up i'm going to change this to volume so we have a display of the data mm, this should show the path okay well oh sorry yeah, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to, under grids, we need to specify what we want to read. And right now it says density and temperature. Uh, let me let me open another dialog so we can see it nicely. So here, I'm gonna click and it says all grids and I'm gonna explicitly specify the grids that I want. We don't have anything for, for velocity, so I'm gonna keep that as it is. And now we have the, uh, we have the, sim read in using the Arnold uh, volume note and basically what this allows us to do is read in VDB volumes and render them directly and I'm gonna look through the camera that I have already and you can see we have uh, camera movement I just need to rotate this 70 degrees so that it matches the camera animation that I did so the bear is aligned correctly cool so this is great and uh, <coughs> pardon me this is great, and what this node has, it comes in with a shader that uh, we can tweak, but I would like to create my own shader and tweak it um, tweak it at the shop level. So I'm gonna go to shop, and this is where we can create the uh, custom shaders. I'm gonna type in Arnold shader, and we're gonna call this melt effects uh, dense volume, because later we're gonna create something else. So under the volume if I dive inside, you can see we have the out material node and here we can connect whatever uh, uh, shader we have. In this case, we're going to create the new volume, uh, standard volume node. And we only have to, we have to connect that to the uh, volume output. And if I click BY, you can see it has, <coughs> the default settings are correct, so we don't need to change anything at the moment. And then we're going to create some lights to get started with this. Cool, so I'm gonna go back and I'm going to create two lights. I'm going to create a uh, distant light, so Arnold light, and we're gonna create a sky dome light. And the second light is going to be a sky dome, so I'm gonna hit tab and create an Arnold light as well. And in here, if we go under the uh, light tab, I'm gonna change it to sky dome and that's all we need uh, for now. I'm gonna give it a, a blue tint and I'm gonna lower the intensity a little bit. And for the uh, first light, we're going to set it to distant so it emulates the uh, the sun. 
So I'm going to select that and then we're going to rotate it a little bit. And I'm going to turn off the viewport uh, shadowing so it's faster to rotate. And I'm going to set it to these angles. So it's pointing from uh, left to right. Cool. So for the color, we're going to give it a, a tint, an orange tint. And we're going to increase the intensity to 8 and the exposure to 2. Cool. So I'm going to call these sun and uh, EMV. And let's give them two different colors. Sorry. Cool. And now we're ready to start testing the, the shader. And I'm going to go to the out and create an Arnold. And we're going to call this melt effects dense preview. And we're going to connect the camera, set the camera, which is called uh, cam3. And for the object, I just wanted one single object uh, in there. So I want to force that. And then for the same for the lights, I just want these two to be always here. So I'm going to. I don't need anything else. And then for the, uh, I, I would like to add a grid. So I'm going to create a grid geo. And I have this, so I'm going to simply paste it from a different scene. So that's the grid. And then the I'm going to give it a shader. And in this case, I'm going to use the Arnold standard. And this is just the Arnold standard shader that we can use. And I'm going to set the, let's see. So I'm going to set the, I'm going to leave the color that and then we can reduce it a little bit if we need to. So I'm going to switch to the render view and it's already uh, set to the, to this melt, uh, melt effects dense preview wrap and the camera, I'm going to leave it at the, the same and then I'm going to hit render and that we should get uh, a preview of the sim going. So. Cool. So we have our first preview and I'm going to include the, the ground, which I didn't. So let's add the grid back and this guy and let's hit render again because we added a new object. We have to hit render again. It doesn't have a shader, so we need to attach it. So let's do that and let's hit render. Cool. So uh, I'm going to tweak the ground shader a tiny bit so it's not too bright. Cool. And uh, we're, ready, we're ready to start tweaking the shader a little bit more. Now, there is a few things that we're going to change uh, before we start playing with the shader. The first one is the environment. I'm going to turn off under contribution. I'm going to turn the camera ray all the way to zero. and this will remove the background, uh, the sky dome from being visible to the background. And now we have just the volume and the, the ground. And the next thing I want to add is I, I would like to use a custom LUT, which I have. Uh, this is my own, my personal LUT that I use with all my, most of my renders. So I'm going to hit the, uh, let me restore this back. So I'm going to click load and then I'm going to go to the folder where I have the LUTs and I'm going to load this LUT. Now the render is going to look very different and I'm going to set the gamma to 1 because everything is m embedded in the LUT. I don't need any extra 2.2 gamma or I I'm not going to be using sRGB um, color space. And uh, you guys will have the file that I'm going to be providing in Gumroad will not have will not include this LUT. So if you render this in sRGB, the render will be a little bit overexposed and you have to tweak the the environment light and the sign the sun uh, a bit a little bit to uh, work nicely with an sRGB color space. But for now I'm gonna set this to one and turn on the uh, color space. The LUT sorry. So everything is set up now I'm gonna go back to the shader and we're going to start tweaking this. So let's hit render and that should get the uh, the preview going. And now we're going to play with the settings a little bit. So let's see what we have. So here under the uh, channel, uh, scatter channel, 
I would like to use the same channel that I'm using for density. So um, same same channels. I'm gonna plug this in. Sometimes we need to hit the render again for the, some of the information to uh, get propagated to the APR. Uh, depends on the settings that we're changing in uh, in the shaders. And then we're going to play with the settings a little bit. So I'm gonna give this an orange tint. And that should get the, let's see. And cool. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, backward scattering. So I'm gonna set just a tiny bit. I'm gonna set this to 0 0.3. And let's go back to frame two, where the the bear is it's at full state instead of viewing viewing it here, and now we we have a better view of uh, how how it's going to look like, and I can see that the density is a little bit uh, it's not too dense, so I'm going to increase the density of the volume, and I'm surprised that the render is not refreshing. Cool. So let me cancel this and I would like to verify. Yes. So what I forgot to, to do is the, sh the, the reason that APR was not refreshing is because the shader attached to the object was not, uh, the shader that we were changing is not the correct one. So I need to select the volume node and assign the custom one that we've made that we called melt effects tense. And now it's going to look very different. Um, due to the all, tweak, all the tweaks that we've done. Okay, so let's go back and see what's happening. And it looks like, so let's try. Looks like there is, oh, uh, there is emission happening and we need to turn the emission off and it is set to one uh, by default. So I turned that off and this was uh, one. So I set it to, uh, Sorry, I changed this to two and now I reverted it back to one. Okay, cool. So now we have uh, our shader working and the scatter color now should should work. And this basically controls the scatter, uh, the color of scattering in the volume. So we can, we can leave it at that. And then for the transparency, it's best to view this uh, in a different frame to see the effect. So I'm gonna move to, I'm gonna switch to frame 50 where we have more wispy smoke, maybe 70. And we need to hit render again to export the volume correctly. Cool, so now we can play with uh, with this field, with this control to uh, control the uh, exit color basically of the, of the volume. And I'm gonna set it to something that has an orange tint. And let's go back Let's go to frame 96 where we have even more transparent volume and you can see it, uh, you can see it working. And I'm gonna desaturate this a little bit. And basically this color controls the exit color of the, uh, of the absorption rays of any shadow rays. So we can, uh, this is very handy to get any, uh, this kind of uh, effects basically. So let's put back, uh, put that back, and then for the uh, transparency, this controls how how dense is the how far the ray travels before it bounces back, and the higher the value, the more um, the the more the ray will travel through the volume. So we're gonna set this to two for now, and I think that's pretty much it for uh, for this look. Now let's go back to frame two and hit render. Yep, and I th this is this is pretty much it, the, the final shader for this look. Now I'm gonna pause this and I'm gonna go to out and I need to, I need to find the, uh, the final result that I'm gonna show you guys. Uh, so for the final quality, I would like to change the increase the volume samples on both lights um, to three. So I'm going to set it to three 
for both of them on the sun and the environment and then under if we go under out I'm gonna simply increase the AA settings to 6 and now if we hit render we're rendering at 1280 by 720 we should get a much cleaner result and I'm gonna leave that rendering and this is the final result with just a little bit of color correction happening and this is the final result that we have from the uh, from this shader and rendering the scene out and I'm gonna explain that in a second cool so the, you can see it's much cleaner now overall and uh, we just have to render this so for rendering this I'm gonna uh, let's leave it running we're not gonna change it so I'm gonna copy that and yeah it's rendering again so let's pause it I'm gonna copy this and then we need to basically give it a path out uh, test.v1.exr.f4 so we're gonna call this bare melt dense effects and then we set the frame range to uh, 150 and we need to uh, we're gonna tick on half precision we just need 16-bit floats and then auto crop which will change the bounding box to make it faster to read and then for the AUVs I'd like to add the uh, let, me, let me open another separate dialog so we see it for the AUVs we can add the volume direct the volume indirect but we don't have any indirect so uh, just the volume direct in this case and I think that covers uh, everything for this video in the next one we're gonna learn how to create the uh, lava like look and we're gonna start from this scene and tweak it a little bit more and go from there thank you for watching and see you in the next video bye bye